Check it out, this is Ford's one liter EcoBoost engine. It has three cylinders, weighs 215 pounds, and puts out 123 horsepower, which may not sound like a lot, but per liter, compared to a Lamborghini Aventador, it's actually more. And coming up next, we're gonna tell you everything you ever want to know about the new Ford Fiesta one liter that has this engine. This is, yes. One of your babies. One of them. And one of the things I just learned is that it has uh, more power per liter than a Lamborghini. How the heck did you manage that? That is exactly right. So the great thing about EcoBoost, the, the boost piece, yes. is uh, turbocharging. This is the turbocharger. Uh, that enables us to put more air in and that extra air we can burn. So we get uh, that fantastic power, power density that you're talking about. Yeah, so um, anything new about, I mean, turbos have been around a long time, obviously. Yeah. And in the past, turbos have been uh, used to gain power, but at the same time, they were thirsty, yep. and they added a lot of stress to the engine, so the longevity of the engine wasn't hmm. as great with the turbo. How have you addressed those issues okay. with this engine? So let me talk about the thirsty piece yes. first. So the other half of EcoBoost is Eco, right. and, and what you get with that is a, a smaller engine. So the smaller engine, you, know, you have less throttling, you have less friction, you have less weight. So all of those things give the eco part. Uh, and the other part of these are they have direct injection. So that's new. So that's new, yeah. So typically the historic turbo engines you'd have talked about would not have the had that. The old turbos. Yeah, exactly. And direct injection, uh, we put the fuel straight into the cylinder. That fuel evaporates, it cools the air. We can use a higher compression ratio and that gives us a better thermodynamic efficiency. Now does this use so, premium gasoline or can you run it on? No, you can run it on either. either. It's, uh, it's rated on regular gasoline. And what's the octane when you say regular? Regular uh, 87. So that people would re yeah, people gasoline. recognize yeah. Yeah, the standard regular fuel. Uh, so let's talk about um, let's talk about the three cylinders. Okay. Because that's unusual, for America at least. Europeans have had three cylinders for a long time, but here in America it's very unusual. And one of the reasons, I guess, is because obviously we've always had big cars, so three cylinders were Absolutely. powerful enough. The other issue with three cylinders is balancing them. How did you, how did you solve that problem? So, it's not, so it doesn't shake, it doesn't vibrate yeah. the car. Yeah, so I think where you are going to see in the, in the industry is a lot more three cylinders coming through because of the, the great fuel efficiency. And, and now with the EcoBoost technology, you can also get the performance. But on the, on the, um, the balancing, so typically in a three cylinder, there is an outer balance, which would uh, rock the engine yes. and, and could go through to the customer. Typically, that's counteracted by a balance shaft. We didn't want to put a balance shaft in because that's more weight, it's more friction, it's cost to the customer. So we came up with an innovative solution. Um, we put some out of balance on the, uh, the, uh, the front hub here, you, you can maybe see it here, yep. and also on the flywheel. So we moved that out of balance from the vertical motion to a, a lateral motion, and the engine mounts designed to accommodate that that lateral movement, which is more difficult to do in the vertical movement. So we you know, saved on cost, saved on weight, better fuel economy, and resolved that, what you would recognize is a historic uh, issue for a three-cylinder. Three and this engine has been in Europe for a while, so talk to me about reliability. What, have you, what has your experience been with it? It's been very, very good. Um, it's been in Europe for two years now, uh, launched in 2000, end of 2011. It's been accepted well. It's in a number of our vehicles over there, uh, very well received, and um, reliability has been great. As you, you know, we design all our engines to meet specific customer needs, so we'll work out exactly what the customer is going to do with the engine. We design it, we test it, thousands of hours of testing to sign it off. So, kind of go through the, give me the top three most innovative features on this engine as you see them. Okay. Well. The balancing yes. I've just described, that was one of the, uh, the real uh, pieces of innovation from the team. There's another in here, it's called the, the belt in oil, which is unusual. Typically you may have a chain or a dry belt sitting outside the engine. This drives the, the camshaft from the crankshaft. Um, we've put it inside in the engine uh, and you get further friction benefits and further fuel reduction and it's sealed for life, so there's no maintenance required okay, by the customer. Yeah. None required by the wow. customer. So it's a lifetime 
uh, durable belt signed off for all types of oil a customer may use with this engine. Yeah, so that was one of the big breakthroughs. And you probably can't see it, but on the back we've got a... We'll go around. We'll go around. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, you may be able to see it through here. Um, typically on an engine you have a separate exhaust manifold. This engine has what's called an integrated exhaust manifold. So it's integrated as part of the cylinder head. Uh, and the reason for the, the real reason we've done that is we're able to then cool that with the, with the cylinder head cooling. So typically on a gasoline engine, these exhaust parts, which get very hot, have to be cooled. And you have to do that by putting extra fuel in. Clearly that's not fuel efficient for an uh, eco motor. So we've done something completely different. We were able to cool it with the water we don't have to put that extra fuel in and it also provides a very short space to get to this turbocharger and really drive it up. So, so in America this engine gets on the highway 45 mpg. That's right, yeah. What, in, in Europe the numbers are different, right? It's, it's how many litres of fuel you use per 100 miles, 100 kilometres. Yes. So what's it rated in Europe? I can't recall uh, that off the top of my head. <laughs> I thought it stopped somehow. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not a simple um, transition because there's a different cycle as well used in Europe. Okay. So uh, uh, of which the, uh, yeah, the fuel economy is measured. Thanks for catching me out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to. I just thought our European. Yeah, I should, I should remember. Our European viewers short, would be interested in that memory. Short memory. Uh, uh, it seems like it's a very tall engine, just looking at it. Because uh, it's, it's only has three cylinders, so it just. Yeah, I think it's, it's the aspect okay. you're seeing. It's not. It's not taller than uh, anything one, else, yeah. and it's obviously designed to package in some of these uh, vehicles that are our smaller end of our now, vehicle range. 215 horsepower, 215 pounds. Weight. How much it weighs. Yes. So are there, it, that seems very light. Are there any exotic materials that you use to bring that weight down? Not exotic. Right. No, it's more attention to detail no of the design. No <laughs> titanium. No. But as you can see, it's very, very compact, yes. and that was one of our aims. Well, one of the reasons we actually use iron for the block was to minimize the length, very short spacing between the, the cylinders. And that, of course, then reduces weight on the whole engine because of that, that narrow here, length. Here in North America, so far, it's only available with a five-speed automatic. Did you, uh, did you uh, map it so that it works ideally with a five-speed, a uh, five-speed manual, sorry, five-speed manual? Yeah, yeah, it's I mean, been so the, the power curve kind of matches the, the number of gears. It is, it is matched, it's, yeah. uh, it's calibrated to support that transmission. And, you know, as we go forward, we may be looking at some further alternatives coming in the future. And what's the power curve like? Are you talking about that? Where is most of the torque? So 90% of the torque is available from 1350 RPM upwards. And what's the red line? So the red line is around 6000 RPM. That's great. So you've got a lot of torque through the whole, the whole width. And we offer a feature called Overboost. Yes, it goes um, to 11. Which, that's final which tap, is 11 on the button, yes. that's right. <laughs> How does so, that work? So, well, in the higher gears, um, we're able to transiently, so during the acceleration, uh, offer a little bit more boost from the turbocharger, burn a little bit more fuel, but still within the limits, design limits of the engine. So it's just a little bit extra for the customer. 11 is there. And, and this is such a tiny little turbo, look at that. I mean, it's, yeah. it's amazing how small that is. Yeah, and obviously this is a small engine. Yeah. So this was this turbocharger was developed specifically to go with this. It's very small, and that's one of the keys to that, that great driving feel, that this, because it's small, can spin up very, very quickly. No turbo lag, or very No little. turbo lag, exactly. Um, and if, uh, I had to ask you, what's your kind of favorite part of the engine, you know, the one part that really stands out, besides the fact that it's relatively unusual as a, as a whole? Um, as an engineer. As an engineer. Yeah. That's a great question. I mean, I, I, I really like the integrated exhaust manifold because that's a, technically a challenging thing to achieve and it really gives genuine benefit in the end product to the customer. So. And are there any questions I should have asked I didn't? Well, that's a pretty good list. Okay. All right. Well, thank, <laughs> thank you, you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. So we're